I greet you all in the precious name of our Father, Holy Spirit, and our Lord Jesus Christ. It's such a privilege to greet our viewers, but also each and every one. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. And God really cares about us. And God loves us. And God wants to be there for us who affectionately cares about what we are doing and our cares and our needs and, and everything about us. So it's such a privilege to greet you. Let us all pray. Father, we worship you. We praise you. We worship you, Holy Spirit. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We love you. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. I just want to say thank you for opportunity again to bring the word. Holy Spirit, it's you that make the word alive. I pray for a hundredfold fruit, Lord, and I ask your Holy Spirit that you will bring the word and I'm only the instrument. Let us take out of this what you want to give us. And we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm excited about the word. And the reason why I'm so excited about the word is because it's so powerful and it's so life-changing when we can just realize this and, and it's so helpful. And I just want to testify about this. My son John Peter needed to do uh, prose for I stayed for it. Now I stayed for this in South Africa, our art festival, some some places do I stayed for it in the place of art festival, but it's an art festival. And he did a part of David and Goliath. And I know it sounds, oh, such an easy part. I mean, he's already 17, but he did it by glory goes to God. Excellent. And while he was doing that, Holy Spirit spoke to me. And I thought, okay, oh, yeah, Lord, I hear. And the day, as the day grew on, I was thinking about this word and I was chewing on this word. And I thought, Lord, this is something deep. And Holy Spirit gave me a command me to do and on that was the Monday, the Tuesday, we had a gathering together and we spoke again about the word. And then I thought to myself, this is word that needs to go out. And I felt the Holy Spirit spoke to me again. And I said, okay, Lord, what do you want to tell me? And I'm going to bring what Holy Spirit had spoken to me. And about it. I will not even be surprised if Holy Spirit is not going to talk more about what I need to bring so I'm just going to go background history for those maybe who've never heard the story of David and Goliath. Background history is simple. David was a boy of Israel, a teenage boy. He was not a grown-up yet. He had seven brothers. Three of them went to the Israel army and the Philistines was in, came up to make war against the Israelites. So they were standing on one hill and the Israelites on the other hill and the valley was in between. So then there was a strong fighter, Goliath. He was three meters tall, and even his span was ten meters, but uh, nearly ten feet big. His span more than three meters, you know, his span. So this is a big man. It was a strong man. I, if you just look at his all the his weapon and the shield and everything, the spear, how big it was. You can go and read it yourself by one, at one Samuel sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. It's actually very nice to go and read it. So this guy was an excellent top fighter of the Philistines. So he came up that one morning, if you read in 1 Samuel 17 verse 8, Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come up to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants or soul? Choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the lands of Israel this day. Give me a man that we might fight together. When Saul and the Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So we sat here with a situation where the Israel army is there, the Philistines is there, but this top fight that was actually telling this people to come and fight against me, a person, and none had the courage to do this. David, however, was a son of Jesse, and his three eldest brothers was in the army and in, in a battle with Saul and it's Eliab and 
of being gnawed up and shut up. So David's father, Jesus, told him and said, Go and take food for your brothers. So David took the food for his brothers, and when he came to the battleground, it was when Goliath came out. Now for 40 days, Goliath did that. Hey, look at that. For 40 days. It rained for 40 days. For 40 years, Israel was in the desert. Don't it, don't it sound familiar? I mean, if you look at that, 40. 40 days, 40 years, 40 that. So it's actually quite amazing how the importance of 40 was there. Listen what happened. Every evening and every morning he came and he presented himself with that. And then what happens is David heard it. And he was not comfortable. And he was actually angry when he heard it. In verse 26, and David said to the men standing by him, What shall be done with the man who kills the Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? So listen what happened here. Not only did Goliath mock Israel, but they mo he mocked the God of Israel. But actually, David stood there and said, What will happen to the guy who's killing this giant? To take the reproach away from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Look at that. How dare Goliath, how dare Goliath defy the armies of the living God? Listen to what I'm saying. How dare Goliath defy the armies of the living God? And I hope you can start to hear where this message is going. And the men told him, that shall be done for the man who kills him. So then they said, you can go and read it by yourself. He can get the, the daughter of Saul. But then Eliab heard it, his oldest brother. And he said to the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, why did you come here? With whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your presumption and evilness of heart, for you came down that you might see the battle. And David said, What have I done now? Was it not a harmless question? And David turned away from Eliab to another, and he asked the same question. And the men gave him again the same answer, and that's how he can marry the king's daughter. So David went to Saul, and when he came to Saul, Saul told him, You are not able to go and fight against this Philistine. You are only an adolescent, and he has been a warrior from his youth. Listen what David said. And David said to Saul, Your servant kept his father's sheep, and when there came a lion, or again a bear, or took a lamb out of the flock, I went after him, and smote it, and delivered the lamb out of his mouth, and when it arose against me, I caught it by its bed and smote it and kindled it. Listen what he said. You need to hear what I'm saying. I went out after it and smote it and delivered the lamb out of his mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its bed and smote it and killed it. Your servant killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord will be with you. So then Saul tried to clothe David with his armor, but David just dropped it off and said, No, he can't do, do that. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in his shepherd's lunch bag and a whole kid's skin slung from his shoulder in his pouch and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David, the man who bore the shield going before him. And when the Philistine looked around and saw David, he scorned and despised him for he was but an adolescent with a healthy reddish colour and a fair face. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog 
that you should come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of the ranks of Israel. You came to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I came to you in the name of the Lord. The God of Israel. Oh, I love this word. No? Whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. And I will smite you and cut off your head. And I will give your corpse of the army of the Philistine this day to the birds of the air and a wild beast of the earth that all earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's. As ah, isn't it beautiful? And he will give you into our hands. Listen to this. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you into his hands. When the Philistine came forward to meet David, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it. And it struck the Philistine, sinking into his forehead, and he fell in on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and struck down the Philistine and slew him. But no sword was in David's hands. So he ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw their mighty champion was dead, they fled. Now, if we look at this, and I, I really am trusting God that you will hear what I'm saying, please listen to this whole message to the If you look at this, David was called to kill Goliath. But his main purpose, he was called to be the king of Israel, not only Judah, Israel. But it started with, in 1 Samuel 16, where David was anointed as king. And it says in 1 Samuel 16, verse 13, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of the brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel arose and went to Ramah. So if we look at the history of David, and please go and read it, I don't have time to read all of that. We can see that David was the youngest of the, all his brothers. And nobody even thought that he's supposed to be the next king. But they didn't even bring him. When Samuel said, is there somebody else? Then Jesus said, yes, my young bro, son that's still looking after the sheep. If we look at that, we can see that David was in quite a humble position in his family. I don't even think anybody thought a lot of him. Because when Eliab saw him, when he at Goliath, Eliab actually scorned him and said, why don't you go? Who's looking after the few sheep? There was such humiliation, such a, he was, he didn't get the attention that he's supposed to get. And this is what David had. But this is not what God saw. God saw a young boy with the ability and calling to be a king. But on this, before he needs to do that, he had the calling to slay the giant. And then, the Israel was in a, this army, in this fight with the Philistines. And Goliath was there. All the trained soldiers were scared. But David had his own training from God. He was kept in a humble position. And David used that humble position to grow. To grow. First of all, if we go and look at Psalms, we can see that a lot of Psalms was written while he was a shepherd. And a lot of big stories, Psalm 23 for, simple, for a simple uh, example, was written because he knows what it is to be a shepherd. But we know that the Lord wanted him to be a shepherd so that we can understand what it means that Jesus is our great shepherd. David was in a humble position to prepare him for something greater. And you and I sit often in humble positions and then we can get angry and we can get negative and we can fight. This colleague of me gets all the attention and I'm actually well the one doing the work. 
or even in a ministry, I sing as well as that one, but that one gets the attention. I play as well as that one, but that one gets the attention. Nobody sees me. And then we take offense. And we, we sometimes you will see in churches, people turn away. I'm not going to be in that church anymore because it's only that person that gets attention. Or people get angry and start to gossip at works against the other one who got the promotion or gets the attention. Instead of using this time when you are not promoted to the glory of God to grow into a, wherever you are supposed to be. And I know what I'm saying here because I know the Holy Spirit told to me. Sometimes we get places where we are not lifted up. David was scorned at by his eldest brother at least. He was not even, when, when they needed to anoint him as a king, the, the, the king between Jesse's sons, he was not even acknowledged by the family to be there. If it wasn't that Samuel asked for it, then... I mean, who would ever worry about an, the eighth son? But David used it to grow spiritually. He used it to learn to fight the lion, to learn to fight Goliath. He used it to the glory of God. And this is the heart of Father God for you and me. If we get into a work, and you, you and I feel that we are supposed to get more acknowledgement, don't go miserable, don't go negative, don't go and feel that the world is owing you something. Go and say, Lord, I'm in this humble position. What do you want me to do? And you do and excel in that humbleness and wait for God to lift you up where you are. Somebody needs to hear this word today. And please, you can share. The viewers, if you get the word and the word is something for you, please share it on the comments. Please write it. We would love to hear your testimonies. But don't get angry, don't get tired to, to do good, do your best. And if we look at this, David continued to be faithful even, even in the fact that nobody acknowledged him. He continued to be faithful. He wrote songs that even years after he wrote those songs as a simple teenage boy, we are still reading those songs. And he used the Time of humbleness to the glory of God. And he waited upon God to lift him up. The Spirit of the Lord was already on him after Samuel had anointed him. But he didn't step up and say, now I'm king and now I'm the boss. No, he stayed in that humble position. If you go and read, even in 1 Samuel 16, he went to serve the other king. He went to serve the other king. This is so beautiful, but listen, but the other thing, David got trained to kill the lion. And the bear, so that he can have the training to kill, kill Goliath. God helped him to kill the bear and the lion, so that he will be able to kill the giant. Now, this is what I want to tell you. Sometimes in this humble position, we get in a we get difficult situations, very difficult situations. Now, if you go to the symbolic meaning. Now, the symbolic meaning of lion, remember, it can be lion of Judah, the Jesus, but it's also Satan comes around like a roaring lion. And if you look at a lion that Samson killed, or the lions with Daniel, it can also a ferocity, a predator, feroc uh, ferocity of a predator type of personality, something furious, something strong, something that wants to kill. And this we so often get in a humble position. We will get often that it feels as if the situation is against us and it can kill us. And the symbolic meaning of bear is can cruelty, insensitiveness. Also, I talk about a negative part, because you get also a positive part on bear. Insensitive, self-seeking without spiritual cons consciousness. So in that humble position of us, we often get a place where people are screwed to us where there is darkness against us, and they want to kill our position, they want to kill who we are, they want to, they, they do, there's a lot of attack on our cruelty, self-seeking, people is from folk motivated and focused on himself, and in that we get so often hurt, or we, we need to protect ourselves, and if we look at what had happened here, David said, 
he said, the Lord help me. The Lord help me to overcome the lion and the bear. And this is what I want you to see. And I pray the Spirit makes it open now for you. And he said, he told Saul that he went. And he said, he went after that. And what did he do? I went after it. I smote it and I delivered a lamp out of his mouth. And then if it comes back to me to attack me, I kill it. Now listen to this. You need to hear what I'm saying. In our places of humbleness, where God is busy to prepare us for our bigger calling, for a more advanced calling, we all of us go through that. We get places where people are screwed us, where people, the words can kill, where they try to kill relationships, where that the enemy, remember our enemy is not people, our enemy is the darkness, the principalities, uh, Ephesians 6 says it's from verse 10, if you go and look at that, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the darkness, the principalities of this world. So the enemy tries to kill our emotions, our spiritual world, our relationships. When we are in that condition where we struggle with attacks in our humble position, we are supposed to fight it the way how David did it. What did David do? He ran after that, but the key was with the help of the Lord. Lord, help me to stand against that. What is our weapon? Uh, first of all, the whole armor, but the importance to defeat. He ran after them. He took out the shepherd. He did not let his work go. He took out the sheep. He protect the sheep. He, he, he make sure that the sheep is safe. Often in this place where we are kept in humbleness, God is preparing us to grow. We are supposed to look after the sheep that God gave us. And to protect the sheep, we look after the sheep. He, he took them out of that enemy's mouth. So what do we see? Often in this time of battle, where we need to defend ourselves against the lion and against the bear, it's often our fellow brothers and sisters that's going through that. And we are supposed to stand till our brother and sister is fine. Till that fellow brother or your family or your siblings is fine. But sometimes in that process, people will then come after you and attack you and you kill it. How? With the word of God. That's your sword. It is written. I, if I can tell you this, you have to hear what I'm saying. If I see that my family is struggling or somebody is struggling, I'll pray. But if it continues, I will walk up and down and I will declare word, 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 and I will declare word over that person until I find the peace of Holy Spirit. And this is what we are supposed to do. We give up, we pray again. Say, for instance, darkness. Say, for instance, you've got a child that's struggling. And now, Lord, please help my child. This is not the thing that we are supposed to do. When a child of ours is attacked by the enemy, we are supposed to go after that darkness and kill it. How do we do that? With the word of God. Lord, my child belongs to you because I am yours. And you said my family will be blessed. This is the things that I'm doing regularly. I will tell the Lord, Lord, this is not according to your word. I bring the word of God. Jesus stood against Satan with the word. I bring the word of God against it. And I said, this is not against. Um, this is not according to the word of God. And I stand against that. I declare my child will be blessed in Jesus' name. I declare no weapon formed against my child shall prosper. I declare in Jesus' name that my child will have favor. I declare in Jesus' name that health will and healing will return to this person. I declare in Jesus' name that this and this and this and this and this. And I break the power of darkness. And I bind my child's thoughts to the thoughts of a living God. And this is how we are supposed to stand. Until we got the victory. Until that enemy is dead. People, I, I, what I'm bringing you is what I love. And I know this is the word of God. We give up. No matter. Start to pray for your children. Fathers, pray for your family. 
Wives, pray for your husbands. Pray for your colleagues. Many years ago, one lady said she's struggling a lot with a unit manager in a nursing. We were in a nursing. But that unit manager was so ugly and she did not like her and I don't know what else. And she does not know, didn't know what to do. I said, start praying for her. Start praying and ask God to bless your relationship and bless her. Two weeks, she came back. She said, there's a whole difference in that world. Until the day that that lady lived, she and that unit manager was in such a close relationship. It's time for us to get to the place that we start to do what David did with the enemies. You don't allow your child to be caught up with the bear. You don't allow your child to be caught up in a, um, in a lion's mouth. You ran after them, your colleague, your friends, your brothers and your sisters, your father, your mother. You grab that person, bring the word for that person, bring the love of Christ to that person, bring the healing of Christ to that person and kill that giant with the sword in Jesus' name. Kill that lion and that bear. What happened then? He went to the battlefield. God prepared him in his humble position for something more. This is what God is doing with you and me. The moment when we are in a place where we don't get what we feel we deserve. Start, stop moaning and groaning and feeling sorry for yourself. Stop to say, okay Lord, I'm here. I'm supposed to grow. What do you want to teach me? How am I supposed to handle this? What do you learn to, be, uh, to teach me in this? Teach me, Lord. What do I need to learn? And then what you also do is you say, okay, Lord, show me the lions and the bears so that I can fight it in the name of Jesus so that I can make sure that my brothers and sisters, whoever is delivered, and so that it can be killed. Because I know you are training me to, to kill the giants. You are training me to become the king or the queen in my circumstances where I said, this is nothing to do, I'm such a big person. This is to do with authority in Christ. Good. What happened then? Now we went to the battleground. Time for, for to advance his 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 battleground. To advance his, I want to say, his calling, a greater calling. And next season in his life, the first thing that happened, he went to the battleground. He still had his sheep. He wasn't really now your king. Go to the battleground. No, he was a shepherd. He stayed in that position, but he was faithful and obedient to his father. And the second thing that happened is he went there and his brother mocked him. Listen to what he did. He did not fought, fight his brother back. No, he ignored his brother. He just said, I didn't ask her anything wrong. And he turned his back on him and ignored him. He knew who was his enemy. He didn't try to fight his brother. Stop fighting each other. See the enemy. Darkness. Darkness is the one behind this. Not the brothers and the sisters and the siblings and the wife and the husband. Fight the darkness. Do you hear what I'm saying? Fight the darkness. So what happened? He turned around and he asked somebody else. And then he went to the king. And when the king told him, you can't do that, we all get it. People will tell you, you can't do that. You are not able to do that. People will humiliate you. Try. His brother actually humiliated him and said, go to your few sheep." He did not even, he, he, even being a shepherd was the lowest position. He even tried to degrade him even more to say few sheep. You're not even a shepherd of a lot of sheep, some a few sheep. And I can tell you, I believe it wasn't that few sheep. And what did he do? He ignored him. He realized, this is nonsense. I'm not going to fight my brother. There is a real enemy, the giant. And what did he do when the king said, you can't do that? He stood up and said, I will. But he didn't tell the, the king, you are ugly, or you because you don't have faith. He just realized he will stood up in faith. And he actually got, he stood up not only for the name of God, but also the army of God. He cared about the Israelites. He cared about his people. And in that giant, mocking his people, mocking his family, mocking his church, mocking his colleagues, doesn't matter what, stood up. I said to my son said, something won't ever change in a situation where it is. I said, not if you start praying. I said, I've seen over and over and over, when I came to places where situations is difficult, the moment when I start praying, not overnight, but in the months, weeks that follow, I can see how God was changing. 
One day I said to the doctor, the doctor said, I don't think any, this will ever change in this world. I looked at him, I said, I'm, I, I tend to differ from you. I said, I'm praying. For five years later, I left in that ward, and I tell you, that ward was a different ward. It was a ward honoring God. That was why I was still in the hospital working. I want to tell you there, nothing is impossible for God. Stand up for your people. Stand up for the church. Stand up for your family. Stand up and say, nobody is mocking. He actually wasn't mocked. He wasn't even part of the army. His brothers was and other people, but he stood up for them. Those. And he, he just said, this Philistine can't do that. But he didn't spend time to tell him, you don't have faith and I don't know what else. I'll show you. No. He said, I will go and fight him. He did not spend time with nonsense. He focused on God and he stayed humble. So then what happened? When Goliath came to him, he said, I will kill you in the name of Jesus. God will fight for me. Again, what did he do? I want you to see what I say. No, he did not only threw the little stone, he killed him. Don't give up until the giant is dead. Don't give up with prayer until you see the breakthrough. Don't give up until you see how God is changing your child. Don't give up until, and then you continue to pray because there's other battles coming. You, need, you and I don't gift up too easily. And if I can just give that today, don't give up and fight the right enemy. It's not your brother, it's not your wife, it's not your husband, it's not your colleague. Fight the right enemy. It's the darkness in the air. It's Satan and his demons. And we have the right to fight it. The Bible says God gave us the power to stand against it and to overcome them. But let's start to stand up for each other. Let's start when I see a brother or sister struggling in in the church, let's start, instead of killing them with our words, let us start praying for them. Let's start to do that. And no, if you and I is not there where we think we can work and where we can minister or whatever at the workplaces, remember this is a place where we are supposed to grow. Let us use it to the glory of God so that God can prepare us. And if we look at the end, David stayed humble. He didn't go and say, no, well, I'm the king. The king was too scared. He just continued to serve the king. My prayer is that you and I will always know, <coughs> sorry, that you and I will always know that when we are in a place where we are not lifted up already in another position, where we know that we actually can be there, remember God is busy training us. Use that. In that position, be aware about your brothers and sisters or some colleagues around you struggling. Pray for them. Stand against the enemy. Pull them out of the claws of the enemy. Pray for them and kill the enemy. And then when God says it's time for you to fight the giant, fight that giant and kill him. Fight that giant and kill him. Don't be scared. God is with you. Don't be scared. Don't let people tell you you can't do it. Don't let people tell you and humiliate you and don't take offense on that. David did not even take offense. He just ignored it. Go on, focus on killing the giant and not your people around you. Father, I brought the word of God exactly like I believe you gave it. Will you bless it? I glorify your name for that. Father, I'm trusting your plan and fall through in Jesus' name. Blessed are you. The blessing of God is upon you and, up, and upon each and every one of us. Let us go and be giant slayers. Let us go and kill those bears in the, with the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of our Lord and Jesus Saviour. Let us go and stand up for Christ. Stand up for our brothers and sisters. And let us see the victory. You know what was beautiful? After David killed Goliath, the rest of the army got courage. Let us go and encourage each other to stand up and run the race. You are blessed.